What's up everybody, welcome back to Case Digital. My name is Zach, and in today's video, we're answering the question how to check if a string is a number in Python. And I wanna actually go over several string functions that you can use, and why they may work, or why they may not, and what other techniques that you can use to check if a string is a number. So, let's get right into it. So one way you can check if a string is a number is by using a built-in function, a built-in string function called isNumeric. So now if I run this and I say, so we have our string number, which is just one for now. We're going to change this as we go through this to show you some caveats, and things that may happen that may screw up some of these built-in functions. But essentially, if you go print and I say string underscore num dot is numeric, and actually I wanna do an F string with this because I wanna show you um, string num is equal to that, and then is a number is equal to, and then we're gonna do string dot num dot is, oops, string underscore num, underscore num dot is. Now, I wanna show you these. So look, there's alpha, alpha num, alpha, there's ASCII, all these different built-in things. You can say is decimal, is digit, is numeric, is space. So we're gonna go over several of these, and the first one I'm gonna is numeric. So if I run this, and it is a function, um, and basically what's gonna happen is it's going to return true if it is, and false otherwise, and it's true under the condition that all characters in that string are numeric and there is at least one character in the string. So we have at least one character um, and I do need to close off this. So if we run this, this should stay true, right? Cause one, there's nothing else in there. It's just one um, and come down here. And just like that, we say string, which are, there's our string is a number and is equal to true. And that's true, you know, it is. And we can do something like, hey, zero, let's just do all this. This should say true as well. I can say, um, but so, okay, yeah. So if we start getting to this where it's like a, like a, a number where it could have a, uh, like a comma in it because it's over a thousand, you know, it's a thousand or more. So if we run this and we say, is this numeric? We get false. Well, why is that? And the reason it is, is because if we go back to the definition of what this is saying is basically, um, um, it says a string is numeric if all characters in a string are numeric. Meaning every single character in there has to be numeric or be a number to essentially um, work. And this is the same case if I go negative a thousand, right? And I run this and boom, just like that, we get the number is false. So basically this is saying if, you use, if you're gonna use is numeric, you have to make sure every single character in your string is a basically a number, right? Is a digit. So let's start talking about another built-in function that you can use to check if a string is a number. All right, so another built-in function that you can use, and I'm gonna take this exact same thing and I'm gonna say, let's just say is numeric here. And I'm gonna use another one that we were looking at and it's going to be dot is a digit, is a digit, right? Which says a string is a digit, or a string is a digit string if all characters in the string are digits and there is at least one character in the string. Now, this sounds oddly familiar to that of what is numeric is. So, so let's run through um, basically the exact same scenario that we went through, right? So if we start at one, these should both say true, right? Which they do. And then if I say 10, and I run this again, it works. If I say a thousand, it should work, right? Everything in there is a number. Let's try our comma. That is going to say false. So that has that issue now is the same issue as well. And we try our negative, this should say false. And let's try like if we had it a variable name, so like var, which that would be a bad variable name because you can't have numbers leading variable names in Python. Um, so if we run this, again, it says that that is false as well. So this is digit acts very similar to that of is numeric, where basically um, every single um, you know character in your string has to be a number. So let's try um, a, another built-in function that we can look at. All right, so if we try another built-in function, I'm just gonna go in here and grab this. And then we're gonna say dot, we did digit is decimal, returns true. Let's try this one, it is decimal. So uh, basically a string is a decimal string if all characters in the string are, are decimal and there is at least one character in the string. So try this um, and I'm gonna say, basically just say this. And then we'll just, again, same thing, make sure everything's on the same page. Look, everything's true with one, with 10, it's true with 100, or let's go 1,000, it's true. With a, Let's put a decimal point, 10.00. You'll see that everything is false again. And 
We'll do a minus sign in front and just show that everything again is false. And this is because that we're trying to check if all the numbers that we're using are essentially decimal numbers in this case, right? So um, like zero through one and not something like a hex or octal or anything like that. So that's one caveat with this. Again, this is still looking for every single character in it. So how do we solve this, right? Like how do we go about this? Well, one way that we could do it is maybe try using some other built-in functions or um, using some other, like some other techniques like maybe looping. So let's look into that. All right, so all the techniques and all the built-in functions that we've been looking at so far work great if there's no, no such thing as a decimal point, a comma, a negative number, a character, or, you know, like a, like a letter or anything like that. They all work great if they're all just a number. But we're gonna run into situations where say we take a float number and format it into a string and now it's got a decimal point. Now, the first way and the first thing that I thought about this when I was, you know, trying to prepare for this video was I've looked into this a couple times and like, yeah, these are things are great if you're going character by character. So one method you could potentially use to check if this is a number. Um, and again, we're defining, and I wanted to set this straight, we're defining a number as anything that's a float or anything that's negative or positive, right? So, and it could essentially be like a dollar type number where it could have a comma in it, right? Because you could give a string that has dollars or uh, commas in it, which is a thousand, which technically is a number. And oftentimes when we write stuff, we, you know, what's it that above a thousand or whatnot, we put in the comma. So one method that I thought of is we could essentially combine some of the stuff that we've learned how to remove characters um, as well as check everything that's a number. So let's try this. What happens if we just went through and removed everything that was a negative, we could remove the negative sign to tell us, hey, yeah, you know, I understand that, you know, it's going to be, if it's, if it's a negative, then it's gonna have that negative sign. And I know that's still a number. So let's remove that minus sign. Let's remove that decimal point and let's remove any and all um, commas as well. So let's try this. So if I go and I say um, print, and I'm gonna say, Let's let's say this is our simplified num is equal to string underscore num dot replace. And now I'm going to go through and say, hey, let's remove that decimal point, remove all of them, replace them with an empty string. Then let's go and let's do the same thing. Let's remove all of our minus signs. If there's multiple, there probably shouldn't. Hopefully there isn't in a number. There shouldn't be in a number, right? Do that. And and one thing that we can do is we can say remove it only one time because there should only be one, right? If thinking through this, there should only be one uh, minus sign in that. Now you could have strings that's like a phone number number, right? Where you do um, your phone number minus and that's, you know, that's not the case. So we could do some other checks, but I'm just going to say, I mean, for a simple case, we would just do this. But if you knew it was always a number that was going to be at the beginning, you could say, hey, is the first number or is the first character this? And um, if it is, remove it. Otherwise, you know, don't. But I'm just going to leave it as this. And then we're going to say replace. Uh, we're going to say the comma and replace half of it. So basically I'm removing, like I said, the minus signs, the, the, the decimal points and the commas. And if I get this, I should get a simplified string. And then we can do something like, so I'm going to say replace. And then we're going to say string number is that, and then is number, and then we'll just say is simplified string a number, right? Is, and then we can say is numeric. We can use any of them, right? I can say is numeric, is digit, um, and I'm just going to do is numeric. So if I run this, you should see, let's go back to our beginning. We got one, if I run this, simplify string, the replace method, yes, it is true. If we get 10, another you know, another variable, yes, that's true. If we get, say, negative 10, we're saying that we're defining a negative number as negative or positive, and it's, you know, any decimal number, right? So. In our case, that, that is a number, and our replacement said, hey, it captured that, whereas all the other ones didn't. Now, I can say, uh, let's do 1,000, and let's do this version of 1,000. Everything catches it just fine, or everything says true. This version of 1,000, hey, our replace method worked. It's catching it, right? It's checking if it's a number. Now, let's say negative 1,000, right? And we see that negative a thousand, we say, yeah, that's true. That's a number with our replace method. Um, again, going by our definition of a number, that it is basically from you know negative infinity to positive infinity, and we can you know put in commas if we want, or it can be a float, right? And that's the other thing. Let's do 0.53. If I run this, like that's say that's your dollars and cents, and you're trying to check if it's a number. Boom, just like that, we have a case where it's handling that for us, right? And we just added some simple techniques in Python where we use uh, string dot replaces to help us to get that. Um, whereas all the other ones, those built-in ones, they're only dealing with those strings. Um, now there's other things that we could do because say you have a number, so say five 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 dash five 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 dash five 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 five. We run this technically. 
technically this is a phone number and not an actual like number or digit number. But if we run this, we run into the case where, hey, our thing still says true, right? And that's because I have right here the replace value. We're just replacing all the dashes with empty strings, which becomes that would make that old number. Whereas if we only wanted to do it one time and we did this, it would say, hey, that's false, right? Now there is a caveat, like you should, all, like if you're going to do something like this, I would make it so that you, re you always check. You don't necessarily do this. You only do this condition if the minus sign is at the very first index. Otherwise, you're gonna get something and um, it's gonna run. Now, or it's not gonna, otherwise if you do like this and replace it and only do it one time, then you, you'll, you'll still get it being false. But what happens if it's a phone number without the area code, right? And you run this, I, it's now true again, right? So there's some cases and caveats there, right? Um, now, what happens though, if we do the underscore, right? Because in, in Python, I put it in the wrong spot, but in Python, we have the ability to do represent numbers like that um, to help us space it out. Now, if I run this, everything's gonna be false because we didn't account for that case um, in our thing. Because I could run this, and this is this is actually a valid number, um, and I'm gonna get an error running it because it's not a string, right? So I can say this. And now it should work because basically what happens is in Python, they allow us to do this so that we can then, it'll just squash everything together as you see here. So when I convert it to a string, it's just gonna convert it to um, our fives all in one spot, which is gonna be end up being true. So that is the repa replace method. Now, again, there are some caveats that we have to watch out for. Let's try and look at some other built-in functions that actually could help us solve this so we don't have to do a bunch of these replaces. All right, so probably one of the last ones that I wanna show how you can check if a string is a number or not is basically by using the built-in like int uh, class as well as the float class. Because what I could do is do something like, um, and I'm gonna do this. And probably the best way to do this would be to use a float because a float, regardless if it's a, uh, a got it has a decimal place in it. It'll help us catch that as well as um, basically that's the biggest thing, right? So if I just do float and I run this, I'm gonna say float string is equal to the float of our string underscore num, right? And what I'm gonna do, what basically this does is this takes our no number and then it's going to convert it to a float. And then uh, basically it'll tell us whether or not it is a float value, right? And if it's a float value, then it's gonna work, right? So, and what I mean by that is, and I guess I'll, let me just show it cause that it'll make a little more sense here. Um, and then we'll just say, basically if you get to this line, it's true. <laughs> and you'll see why I say that here in a minute. And that's because like, I take our number, our string number. Let's start off with the one that we just did, um, the 555s. Five, five, five. If I run this, then we get flow is true, right? And you're like, okay, well, Zach, why, why is that true? Well, it converted it and I can show you, um, here's our float string. It's not really a float string. And this is, this is flow bow. That's a bad way because what this does is does convert it to a floating point number. It's an actual number, not a string. Um, and if we run this, you'll see that it becomes a number, right? If you check the type, it's a float. Now, if I run, if I do this, one, if we go back to our original, all of our cases that we were going through, one, yep, that works. 10, yep, that, that works. 10.5, zero, we run this. Yep, that works, converts it to a float, 10.5. It works, it's a number, it's true, it passed it, you're able to use it. Negative 10.5. Yep, that worked. It got to that line. Everything else is, you know, false except for our replace. Now watch this. We just, it just aired out. So we didn't get to that line. So right here, it tried to convert it. It doesn't recognize commas. And so it airs out and you get, a, basically it exits your program, right? We get to a point where we ran an error and it exits our program. So the trick to this is to catch the error. And what you would do is essentially say try and then accept. And this is a value error as it shows right down here. So value error. So we're gonna try and catch anything that goes through that's a value error. And then we're gonna say, and I'm gonna do um, is number is equal to true. And then basically, if it gets to this point, is number is equal to false. But is this really the case, right? Because if I run this, and then I can just do, if I run this, we're gonna say that, hey, uh, oops. Got an out of scope error. So if we run this, um, which because we're trying to print it out there and it was in this scope, so we lost scope and we aired out, right? Um, so if we run this, it's gonna say our value of this is not a number, but we know that's a number because it's stinking uh, the, 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 the comma, right? Because it's a thousand. So this just kind of goes to the fact that as you're dealing with this stuff, when you check with number, like you would think it'd be really easy, right? I can just check it and it should be there to check it, right? Well, you run into cases where all these different things um, don't really, like you run into an issue basically where like these commas or these extra things that we do as humans or as people to, when we're doing math, 
help us to visually separate everything so we know, oh yeah, that's that number. It can cause issues for the computer. So like the negative sign and the decimal point and the, um, you know, the comma. So you kind of have to combine a lot of these methods. So I would say, honestly, probably the best way to, to, to do this is to, re is to combine this replace method with this float method. And the reason I say that is because I can pass a lot of strings in here and it'll tell me whether or not it works. However, like for instance, if I did, var this should fail and this is a true case where this is um whoops did i say that string num yeah i didn't say that. okay there we go so string num that's var that's false we know that that's true however this is a number and if i save and i run it through that's telling us that hey yeah that's true i had a comma we know this again is a number so boom just like that it's saying it's false so the best way i would say I'd probably do this is just do something like dot replace comma with an empty string if i run this we get just like that that is true now, if we go back to our, our phone number example, even just like this, this should say that, hey, that's false. So that is probably the best way that I would say is how to, to check if a string is a number is do a combination of a couple things. Replace some of the values that you know that basically are used for separates and give the computer the, the digits, just the digits, because it's it doesn't care about commas or anything like that. Give it the digits. It, you will use decimal points and that's why I use the float rather than int here because what happens if you give it something like dot 50, um, you know, or, or you know, 50 cents or whatever like that. Like this is technically, this is a number. Now, if I run this, you'll get, most things will say it's false. The, our, because we did our replacements, it says it says true. Floating point will convert a 0 0.50 to point, you know, or point, yeah, 0 0.5 to the actual re number representation representation of 0.5. And then it'll, you'll get at value of true. Now, again, there's still more probably caveats that you can check with uh, that might you might run into. But again, this is probably one of the easiest way I would say of how you can check if a number is a string, other than the fact that you could create a for loop and loop through a whole string and run, say, on that character is it numeric or is it decimal and you know and if it's based and basically you could skip over essentially all the you know, commas or the you know minus signs stuff like that that would probably be the only way to do other way that i would say you could create a function to do that for you but i hope this has provided you insight on like sometimes when you run into a problem like you don't it's there's not a lot of built-in stuff or if there is some built-in stuff it doesn't kind of do everything that you would think or would want it to do so you kind of have to combine everything and so i hope this provided and helped you answer this question um if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and until next time keep on programming